we're going to talk about non-uniform circular motion. Uh, what happens when something that's moving in a circle also accelerates around this circle? Uh, that's non-uniform circular motion. When we dealt with circular motion, we had uh, what we called centripetal acceleration. So that's going to play a factor into the fact that we're accelerating around a circle. We're going from a velocity of zero, speeding up our club in this picture, speeding up the club, uh, our velocity is getting higher and higher, so therefore our centripetal uh, Accelerate, centripetal uh, acceleration is getting higher and higher. So how does that change our uh, non-uniform circular motion? If we start out by, you know, providing the circle that, that uh, the club is taking and we add in, excuse me, add in the vectors, we have our tangential acceleration vector and we have our centripetal acceleration vector. Tangential centripetal acceleration. When you add those two vectors up mathematically, they create what we consider the uh, total uh, linear acceleration. Adding these two vectors up will give us the total linear acceleration. How do we add those up? We take our vectors, and I'm going to rearrange this a little bit because I want centripetal on the bottom and tangential here. And you'll see in a few minutes why I'm rearranging this. But we want our tangential here and centripetal on the bottom. It doesn't matter for the purposes of calculating uh, the total linear acceleration, but uh, you'll see when we're trying to get the angle, what angle we are interested in. In order to calculate the uh, total linear acceleration, it's Pythagorean theorem. Centripetal acceleration squared plus tangential acceleration squared, take the square root, that's going to give us the total linear acceleration. Uh, what we want to find next is this angle that the, uh, the total linear acceleration makes with the tangential line. So we want to know what this angle phi is. We don't use theta for this angle, we use phi symbol phi, uh, and that is going to be equal to our inverse tangent of your centripetal acceleration over tangential acceleration. Okay, so here's a quick problem. Uh, about non-uniform circular motion. You have a car that's going to take a turn with a radius of 5 meters uh, starting from rest, so we know our initial velocity is equal to zero, uh, and accelerates to 55 kilometers per hour, so our final velocity is going to be equal to 55 kilometers per hour. Now we want to convert that to meters per second. 55 kilometers per hour is 15.3 meters per second. And we know that this takes 3.5 seconds. And what we can find from here is the translational uh, or tangential acceleration uh, by using our first kinematic equation. Vf equals Vi plus At. Plug it in your numbers and solve for acceleration. Tangential acceleration is going to be 4.37 meters per second squared. Uh, the next 
piece of information we need to solve for is the centripetal acceleration. And we know centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R. The radius we're going to use is 50 meters. We are interested in the centripetal acceleration when it reaches its maximum speed. So the velocity we're going to use is the 55 kilometers per hour. And 50 kilometers per hour, 55 kilometers per hour is 15.3 meters per second. Square that, divide by 50, and your centripetal acceleration is equal to 4.68 meters per second squared. Now you have centripetal acceleration, you have tangential acceleration, and we can solve for the total linear acceleration uh, by using the Pythagorean theorem. And we know we can figure out the angle that that makes from the tangential. Solving, we get total linear acceleration equal to 6.4 meters per second squared. And then we are going to need to find the angle by taking the inverse tangent of our centripetal acceleration over our tangential acceleration. And it makes an angle of 47 degrees from the tangent line. So this is your total linear acceleration of the car.